In this video, we're going to look at demystifying context transitions in Power BI. We're going to look at what it is, how it works, and some examples of when you'd actually use it. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fernand, and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel, where we cover tips, tricks, and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So when you're learning Power BI, you probably heard this term, context transition. And at the beginning of my Power BI journey, I found this term pretty intimidating because it sounds quite complicated. So I hope that by the end of this video, you'll learn exactly what it is and what it does. So context transition is essentially when your row context becomes your filter context. So I've covered row and filter context in a separate video, but in essence, row context is when you have a calculation in a column in a table, the calculation is being done individually on each of these rows. Filter context means any filters applied to these calculations uh, from different things like filters, slicers that may affect the calculation, which determines which rows are included in the calculation. Context transition happens when the row context becomes the filter context. So this is the report that I want to work with you today. It's a subset of the Northwind dataset, which is a fictional company that sells goods internationally. We're not going to go too deep into the relationships, but uh, let's say that we want to simply count and sum up all of the quantity of the orders or products ordered in this company that we have here. So what you would typically do is, you know, create a measure. So let's say sum of products ordered. And you would use a function like a sum, for example. And if we do sum of quantity, now if we bring the measure into a table here, you'll notice that it gives us the total sum for all of the products ordered. So if we add the category here in our columns, as you can see, it still gives us the total products ordered, which is at the bottom, but it adds a row context to this, which gives us a sum of, you know, how many products in each of these categories were ordered. So it applies a filter for each of these rows to say, okay, out of all of the products, how many of them were in this category, for example. And Power BI knows that the categories and the quantity from the order details table is related because we already have a relationship set up for them. So we have a one-to-many relationship with the categories at the top and then the order details where the quantity is here, uh, where the products are and what their categories are is already determined or is understood by our model. So, so far, so good, right? It's already determined to us, you know, what those products are, how many they're ordered and for which category they belong to because we've introduced the row context here. But watch what happens if we go to uh, our order details table and try to do the same thing. So if we add a new column here, uh, and we're gonna call this products ordered, and we're gonna do the same thing. So sum of quantity, very, very simple. So here you'd probably expect for each of these rows on the order details table to be exactly the same as the quantity if we try to sum it. But instead what you get is the overall total for each of these rows. Why is that? And that's because the sum function simply aggregates the column that you give it. Now, in this case, the column is the quantity. What the value that the sum returns is based on what the filters that are applied to this sum function. Now, in this case, because we have created this in a table like this, so unlike the view that we created in the report view, in the table, in the order details table, there are actually no filters applied to this sum that we have created. So in this case, instead of giving us the number of quantity per order details row, it actually just gives us everything for every single row. So actually in this case, what we want to do is we want to apply a filter, a filter context for each of these calculations to say that whenever you do a sum for each of these rows, you want to use the filter for that row, the order ID. 
So in this case, we want to do context transition. One of the easiest ways that you can actually apply context transition is by using the calculate function. So let's do that here. So if we wrap this with a calculate function without adding any filter context here, as you can see, that fixes the value. So it, it does give us the correct value that we expect. And that's because we introduce a context transition via the calculate function. So what the calculate function does is it applies and converts the row context into a filter context for each of the sums that we are doing for each of these rows. So for example, the calculation first goes and sums the quantity, which gives us the 51,000 value. And then the calculate function uses this row as a filter to say, give me only the quantity in this order in this order uh, row. So what that gives us is just the same quantity as what we have here. And that's in essence what context transition does. Iterator functions like sum x, average x, and all the other x variants also do context transition. So you probably already be doing context transition without knowing it. Let's say we want to create a measure that calculates the total sales by multiplying the unit price and the quantity from the order details table. Now, in this case, we actually want to use the sum X because we want to do the calculation for the individual total sales for each of these rows and then sum them up if we want to group them, let's say by categories or by dates. And uh, to do that, we have to do it using measures. So we're gonna create a measure here, first of all, and we're gonna call this one total sales. And uh, we'll do sum x first of all. So the sum x requires two things. First of all, it requires the table that you want to uh, introduce the row context of for your calculation, and then the actual expression itself. So in this case, we want to do unit price multiplied by quantity. So let's break down this measure that we've created. So the first thing that we have defined is the table. So this basically introduces the row context that we want to uh, apply our expressions on. So each row is every single order details row in the order details table. The next thing is the expression, which for every single row in this uh, order details table, what do we want to calculate? So in this case, it's unit price and quantity. And then the context transition in the sum x function allows us to make sure that for each of these row, it's only multiplying the quantity and unit price for each of these rows. So this should give you the individual values in the order details table. So that's why if you uh, go back to our data view here and you get the total values here, it sums them up. But if you break them down into order details, so for example, if you go to add order ID and you add the product ID, you add the unit price and quantity without summing them up. So we'll do not summarize. This should give you the correct values. So if we just do multiplication here, 14 times 12, 168, which is exactly what we have here. So the calculations are being done on, on each of these rows on the order details table. And that's really it for this video. I hope you now understand what context transition is in the context of Power BI. Thanks for watching. As usual, give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't, so I to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.